Shall we play a game? Hello! Welcome back. If anybody joins in, I don't have anybody in the Discord channel as yet. So let's just see. There's someone messaging me, but no. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully there's someone who's going to pop into the Discord channel and make this actually have a point. But anyway, let's jump into a two cat. And why not six cars? And we're going to go from San Francisco to San Jose, of course. And in the morning, of course. Uh, that one's quicker. I don't know why that one's quicker, but it is. Hello, Brad. Hello, Ellen H and JC. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourselves. I think I can unmute you. No, I can't. You're currently muted. I don't know why you are. Can I unmute you? I can unmute you. Uh, no, it says you are unmuted, but you're not. Chat away. You'll have to turn your mics on, I think. Shouldn't be anything stopping you from being able to talk. Ah, there we go. Brad's got his mic alive. And I think is chat going out on the thing. Doesn't really look like it, to be honest. You want to say something, Brad, and I'll just see if it goes out? It's not coming through to me either. This is weird. Uh, let me just check the sound down thingies. Maybe it's not right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Volume mixer... Discord should be going out on chat. Uh, it appears that it is. Let me just set the chat volume. Try now. Give it a crack, Brad. Uh, not hearing anything as yet. What about you, Ellen H and JC, number 29? Are you able to talk? Make sure that chat's part of the stream mix too. I should have done this before. Routing chat is now part of the stream mix, so let's try that. Feel free to have a chat. No, we're still not getting anything coming out of there. What about my own volume settings? Let's have a look. going well isn't it I don't even see you guys light up with the actual little icon so uh, we're not getting any sound out of discord at the moment which is a bit sad I can at least show you the game So you can see the game now, at least. You guys should be able to talk, though. There shouldn't be anything in here that stops you. Let me just check and make sure I haven't got anything silly going on. No, there's no limits. Permissions, invites. No, there's nothing that should stop you guys talking. Should be okay. It's not going to go very well to talk about Train Sim World if we can't get any voices. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get the train moving. See, I see you unmute, Brad. I see your mic go unmuted but then I don't see you the little icon come up that says you're talking so I don't think your voice is getting to discord for whatever reason it's very weird Cap 
Cab car, aren't we? I think. We are in a cab car. Wow. Could have sworn I picked a locomotive, but that's okay. That's fine. Cab light, but it looks better. Alright, get on the switch. It's not going to work too well if you guys can't talk. Hmm. Are you guys actually trying to talk? Have you ever used your sound with Discord before? LNH, I can see you've unmuted. But there's no actual sound coming through for you guys. the open mic's not working that well so um, maybe we'll just take the questions in the YouTube chat I guess since the open mic doesn't seem to work we'll have to try and work out why on a future thing and I think I've got the doors closed so let's get some brakes off and get some throttle happening can't at the moment. Why not? Oh, because the reverse is not in. You donkey. What are you doing to me? Stop it. Alright, now we can do it. Now it'll be fine. There we go. Rail driver was clashing with me using the keyboard. CNW says I locked it. What do you mean I locked it? Let me get this over the other side of the screen. Stop it. anything that means it's locked. My other half just reached in to um, get my teacup so she could probably refill it or something, not realising it was actually full of hot tea and just burnt herself and is now glaring at me. <laughs> it's not my fault, I didn't do it. Oh, let's get rid of this horrendous bell anyway. But what do you mean I've locked it, CNW? I can add more people. I can't see anything that stops people talking. Let me just check the permissions. It's not private. Advanced permissions. Advanced just seeing if there's anything that stops people talking. So people can join it, that's fine. People can speak. Can't do video, can't do activities. Can use the soundboard. Let's turn that on. Let's turn that on. Do that. Just 
changed it so people can use push to talk, but I don't know if that'll make any difference or not. Okay, that one lit up at least. But why aren't we hearing sound come out anyway? I can actually see that people are trying to talk now, so we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We'll get this working. I've got to stop in a minute at a station, but we'll get this going. And clearly I've never tried to do this before. The other thing I could do if I can't get Discord working is I could just chuck up a Google Meet and invite everybody to that. Do you want me to do that? There we go. There we go. That was yeah. better. That true. Yeah. Okay. Can can people hear people now? Yes. Yes. I I told um, Discord through Windows Mixer settings to use my chat channel, which goes out through my external mixer, but um, it clearly didn't. And I've just told it to use that channel from its own settings, and now it is. So, whatever. <laughs> so welcome. Yes. Finally got it working. I'll just stop at the station. If it'll let me apply the brake. So Train Sim World 4 is what? About 10, 11, 12 days away for people with early access? That's a little bit of an early stop, but it'll do the job. Who's looking forward to it or not? Uh, well, I can say for one that I'm quite excited for it. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. What do you think is the uh, most important feature for you? Um, not that I'm really going to use it much personally, but I'm really excited that they're bringing the editor in now because there's been a lot of people who've made a lot of content for Train Sim Classic, and I'm hoping that a lot of those people will move over to making content for Train Sim World now. That would be pretty cool. And I don't know if you know, but the guy that actually made the community version of the editor, Will, so it was Will and Muff who made that thing. Um, Will's actually a DTG employee now, and he's had a huge hand in the uh, official editor. What a way to get a job. <laughs> I've discovered I'm going to have to drive this thing entirely from the rail driver and not use my keyboard, because if I take focus off Discord, it shuts Discord up. No. That might have been the other reason people couldn't talk before. Very cool windows, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Off we go on our way to Milbray. Just realised why this service is quicker. It doesn't stop very many places. That's probably a good thing. Ah, looks like Eliza's got in as well. That, that dude. First time, second time. Go to notch eight. I dare you. Go to go to throttle eight. Just for you. Because we're going to notch four, bro. What are you looking forward to or not for Train Sim World 4? The PC editor is one thing I'm in control, but the fact that uh, it's too expensive, and the next thing you know, why would we have another version of Team Golden and it's like, I can That's the one thing I like about it. And another thing I like about it is to be that down. Let's talk about some of these things. Let me, um, actually, I'll just turn the game down a bit just to make it easier for other people to hear it. Close the, wi close the window, it's not open. Um, I've turned the game down so it'll be easier to hear us. Perfect. And hello, Benjamin's brain in a jar. Come and jump into the Discord if you wish, join in. Um, 
let's let's have a look at so I think two, three of the things you said you were looking forward to the editor that seems to be quite common um, and I yes. think uh, as has been said I don't know how many people will actually use the editor personally but I think they're looking forward to the doors that'll open for creative people who actually will be able to use it I'm planning on using it to build scenarios because I want to be able to add my own markers and things like that which you can't do today oh. uh, the other thing you said is you think it's um, too expensive yes $100 I'm not buying it you've already got Transim World 3 though haven't you yep so it won't be 100 for you yeah, because, yeah, because I'll flip flop between the two games. Yeah, so if you went early access on deluxe edition, it should be about fifty US, I would think. That's what I got for. Um, well, forty-five dollars. P I C C. Hello, we are in the cab car of a Caltrain service. I'll just flip back here so I can change camera angles. That's the wrong formation. I, I'm pretty sure you do have the train backwards right now. I'm pretty sure I do too, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they generally run loco first outbound. They do. <laughs> they very much do. <laughs> yeah, oh well, life. At least um, you guys can keep talking and I can have the game focused again. Now I figured that out. It was another option. It's such a good thing. We're in a tunnel somewhere. Uh, going too fast. You're breaking up a lot, CNW. I'm thinking you're on a phone, probably. Uh, Train Master says early access to Deluxe on Xbox is 80 shouldn't be if you own TSW3 it should be cheaper than that but if you don't own TSW3 then yeah that is about the right price people who haven't joined here let me create a invitation I think I can just create a link you pop a link into the chat on YouTube as soon as I can get rid of that There's a link in the YouTube chat now for anybody that wants to join. Six miles out of Milbury. In our backwards Caltrain service. Or as I often call it, Caltrain. I am particularly hoping that um, Smokebox will bring some of their really good Steam Loco models over. That would be really cool. Big boy in uh, Train Sim World would be quite spectacular, I think, with the the different quality of sound and vision that you can do in this thing be pretty cool um, in the YouTube chat we've got Mr Mayhem saying he can't wait to see what Flying Scotsman looks like in TSW4 I can tell you that if you like the modern Flying Scotsman I'm not going to give you any details obviously because they haven't done a launch screen stream but you will be happy it is shaping up magnificently with sights and sounds just the last few days it's come really good if you don't know I'm Beta testing it, but uh, no, I'm I'm very happy from a driving perspective, from a Steam perspective, from the way it's working. It the no um, surprise that it doesn't have manual firing still. The Steam model actually hasn't changed, but um, one day, one day. Train Masters, this is US prices, I assume. Train Master, standard $39.99 and deluxe $55.99. Yeah, that's the kind of pricing I'm expecting. And the special edition $87.99. Special edition's um, worth it if you don't have those routes and you want them. Marcel says about £54. So yeah, that's about the kind of pricing I'm I'm expecting. And in Australia, I know it's, it's $56 Australian dollars for deluxe if you own TSW3 and you early access... Uh, standard, I th the special edition, sorry, is about 108, I think. But like I said, you'd only buy that if you didn't already have those routes in TSW3. 
So don't don't go and buy routes that you've already got. Four miles to Milbury now. So how are people feeling about paying for the game each year? I know that was very contentious in the launch chat and along with the other mods, um, it did regrettably have to silence a few people who were just going crazy about that, repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Um, but how do people feel about that generally? I, I find it a bit interesting that um, this time they've released the game only one year after when like previously with from trains world 2 to 3 after one year we got rush hour and then two years after we got trains world 3 and i think that the first one lasted for three years before they replaced it um so it's like i it, it feels a little weird that they keep shrinking the time that it lasts for but at the same time you get you know three routes for the price of one and a half so i'm not complaining that much that's okay yeah i i personally don't mind it because it's in today's software there's there's basically three models um there's you buy it once and you never see another update for it ever again or maybe the occasional infrequent update because there's no money in it or it's a subscription model so um, N3V Trains, for example, has gone to a subscription model. It's $129 a year for the the best level of it, and I think about $69, $70 a year for the, for the second best, but you still have to buy routes with that one. Or they go to a, an annual pricing. So I, I don't know if it is going to be annual pricing, but I really wouldn't be surprised. And I do agree, there was a long time between the first one and the next one. So between um, 2020 and Train Sim World 2, that was quite a long time. And they rewrote the way the game works in that time. So I think that's why it did take ages. And then when they were going from 2 and they came to Rush Hour, they rewrote the game again and moved. I'm pretty sure that's when they moved to 4.26 Unreal as well. So those two events did take a long time. I kind of think that's why there was the, the durations there. Speaking of the Unreal version, um, and it's it's perfectly fine if you can't tell us, but have you heard any whispers of them thinking of moving to Unreal 5? I haven't heard any whispers. I know that there are people who work at DTG who themselves have done experiments with Unreal 5, but I haven't seen any signs of that moving into the game that is a, a massive change because the the lighting model is different in unreal 5 and the way that scenery is drawn is dramatically different in unreal 5 so it'd probably be another total game breaker which would take a long time to do that port and then fix all of the backwards compatible stuff again so will it happen i think it probably has to because if you don't keep up with your game engine if you're going to be releasing on a regular cadence with new routes, um, people are going to hate you. So I think they, they have to move there sooner or later, but they're not doing it now. I should probably start paying attention because I've got to stop soon. You also miss a ton of bike crossings. Yeah, I'm you trying to talk to people, though. Happen. We'll just pretend the horn's happening. It's all right. I will just <laughs> mention that a lot of these crossings are quiet zone crossings, so you wouldn't blow the horn for them anyways. In real life, they actually blow the horn, but on all of them, the Caltrain. No, they don't blow the horn, and all of them are Caltrain. I used to ride Caltrain quite often, and they don't. And when they do blow it, it's things like this. It's not a big, long, drawn-out thing. Uh, Trainmaster's in the YouTube chat and says, um, true, but that much money for three routes and two other locos. I don't think that's unreasonable for three routes, but you, you clearly think it is, which is okay. Uh, Trainmaster also says that they're excited for TSW4, but don't like the idea of having to pay for it every year. They're not that happy about that, and don't want to pay for the same game again. Yeah, that, that does seem to be a, a relatively um, common view. This train's very hard to control with rail driver. It really is. Uh, Hopefully I don't 
nib worth this. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to stop in the platform even. Wow. <laughs> One brake application, it's actually going to stop in the right place. I'm impressed. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that does seem to be a fairly common feeling that people aren't that happy about paying for it every year. And, I mean, that that's fair enough to have that feeling, of course. Uh, the The way I see it personally, and it's a little bit like some other games, is that you are getting new content. So if those three, three routes came out independently and you were interested in all three, that's the big thing is you need to be interested in all three for this to really be worth the money for you then I think you'd be quite happy. But if you're one of the players that does Germany or UK or USA and you don't do anything else, then the pricing's not that good for you because it is it is more expensive than what the route would be. True. So I can see why some people feel that way. I think one of the other frustrations is that... Um is that you you don't get any more DLC basically if you don't get the update it sort of stops with your version yeah that is true so it's unlikely that any DLC any new DLC would come for TSW3 they've been very careful not to promise that um, I know they've promised to make some of the updates that are in for some particularly the bug fixes go back to three um, I don't know, and you know, I'm saying this is an ambassador, so I'm skirting a thin line here. I don't know that that would actually happen, because if you look back at history, for um, reasons of not having enough people, they never managed to get the update for two out. So it was done, um, it went through, it all got tested, but it never got out. And it worries me that the same thing might happen again. So if people, are de I would suggest for people don't depend on seeing a three release with bug fixes in it. I mean, it might happen. I know their build system is a lot better than it used to be, so it might actually happen, but. Dunno, off we go to Redwood City now. Um, PICC says in the chat, does anyone know if they could, why they're gonna take out TSW3 from Game Pass? Are they ever going to add TSW4 to it later on? Uh, TSW3 comes out of Game Pass quite regularly. It's not always in it. It's usually in there for about six to seven, seven to eight months, and then it comes out again. I would expect, just based on history, that TSW4 would come into Game Pass at some point. So you could wait for that if you wanted to. The downside of Game Pass, um, and the same the same of the PlayStation version of it, if you get the game on Game Pass and you buy DLCs to go with it, after the game comes out of Game Pass, you can't play the DLCs anymore unless you buy the game, which is a bit crap, but that's just the way those platforms work. So Game Pass is a subtle trap from Xbox, really. Uh, Trainmaster also in the YouTube chat says the only point that makes sense if they include a train sim world game around the area where you live, then he'd buy it. So, yeah, I'd love to see some local stuff from Australia. Um, I would particularly like to see some Melbourne-based stuff. Uh, I have made suggestions running from, say, Tottenham Yard through the city through to Frankston through to Stony Point would be cool for me because you can have... There's Country Passenger on it, there's Freight... Um, surprising amount of freight actually for a suburban route and there's the suburban trains so it'd be good uh, but i don't know that they'd actually do an australian one i don't know what our market's like whether it's big enough or not i suspect they'd probably want a third party to do it so who knows but it would be cool um, i could see as an example new zealand train sim be interested in building midland for train sim world it would be nice if they could build a Wellington area as well. Yeah. So some New Zealand content. So we've got a New Zealand builder. Um, steps around. The editor's coming out. What we don't know yet is how functional is the editor. Can you truly build a new route from scratch? That we don't know. So when it comes out, we'll find out. It'll be interesting. 
I mean, I, I'll say I would buy an Australian root if they made one. So. Same. It'd be cool. I just hope it's a good one. And not something that's really esoteric. So as a Melbourneite, if, if there was a, a Sydney route, and I would think Sydney and Melbourne vie for who's got the bigger population and who buys more stuff, we're fairly equal now. So you could, as a game, you could probably pick content from either area and do okay. Um, but if they pick Sydney simply because Sydney's better known to tourists, would that really upset me? No, because at least it's in the same country. I'd play it. I, I could see a lot of people from Melbourne not playing a Sydney route because it's Sydney, and a lot of people from <laughs> Sydney not playing a Melbourne route because it's Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that might happen. It could. I mean, the, there's a crossing that didn't close there. The, um, the games that happen between Melbourne and Sydney mostly are, are relatively nice, except when football teams play each other, then they always get upset. But uh, mostly it's good natured. But I could see some people who would actually get quite grumpy about it. In the YouTube chat, G Marshall says free roam makes it worth worth it for you. What are you most looking forward to about free roam? What about you guys in the voice chat? Just while um, G Marshall catches up because he's twenty seconds behind us. I mean, it looks like quick play from Train Sim Classic, which was kind of the main mode that I played in back then, so. So for you, it sounds like something you'd be interested in. Yes. Yes, no, I'm, I'm also interested in, because I use it quite a bit in Train Sim Classic, especially when you can put a train which doesn't fit the gauge on any line you want. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. yes, good old running the big boy on Clear Creek Narrow Gauge. Yeah. So I'm not the only one that's done that then, clearly. <laughs> no, I've, I've took um, the APT around the, around the Alps. Excellent. Well, I can tell you, without um, breaking any of my NDAs, that um, the Acela goes really fast down a Rosa. <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> and then it flies a really long way. I can imagine that. <laughs> yep. Yes, and if you've got the God Mode mod installed, not that I'd do that, honest, you can um, stop it from killing the game when you derail. So you can see it fly through the air as it travels off the mountain. <laughs> I have it installed. Yeah, it's an interesting mod. I don't know why that signal was yellow back there, because the next one's green. Anyway. It was probably an interlocking for another train that was set differently and then got set back before you got to it. Yeah, it could be. Oh, some of the level crossings are interlocked on this route, I think, too. So if you're approaching a level crossing too quickly and it hasn't closed yet, you get a yellow to slow you down. Oh, come on, then. Open the throttle all the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is a man who wants more what does it sound like at the back not that much because I turned the game down I, I mean American commuter trains pretty much go straight from zero to full throttle when accelerating because it's the only way to keep to the time yeah they do indeed you, you watch them throttle up and they go one, two, eight <laughs> <laughs> Very hard to understand you, CNW, when you're with you on your phone, breaking up a bit. G, G Marshall is also suggesting that you'd make uh, service industry switching in free roam. Yeah, you could definitely do that. That that would be something that would be quite cool. There's another yellow. We'll just go back to notch four and stick it around fifty then, and see how it goes. Okay, I actually do have a reference page for all of the full signal aspects. Uh, give me a second. Cool. Yeah, so G Marshall was talking about service industry switching, which is something that's tough to do in Train Sim World today because most of the map's locked, so you can't change the points. 
And All right, one... so the yellow over flashing green is approach limited. Yeah, 45 miles an hour. So 50, 55 is a bit over then. <laughs> yes, you should be approaching this signal at 45. Excellent. Bad driving, bro. Bad driving. And now that's an advanced approach, so the next one is approach, and then you have a red. Excellent. So we probably can... Oh, that might be for my stop at Redwood. Well, no, it's still five miles away, so it shouldn't be. We're probably just catching up with another train. Since we're not stopping, and they are, that's the joy of an express service when you've only got one track. Here's another one coming the other way. Yeah, it's just being able to actually switch things I think could be a lot of fun um, I'm not sure because I didn't quite understand the answer that was given in the stream where the free roam can be done in the timetable or not because it would be cool to stick a train in among the other trains but I don't know if that's what it's going live with this is a man who wants to cause chaos <laughs> no how did I go from handle off to lap? Thanks, rail driver. Easy. I just use your keyboard instead. Well, then I have to take focus off Discord, though. So that's actually an approach. The next one. Okay, now it's advanced approach, but you should be slowing to thirty, regardless. <laughs> I love the way the brakes are working in this. Not at all. <laughs> It's not having fun with rail driver today. Oh, I know why. It's because I've got rail driver cal cal calibrated for um, TSW4. It's different now. It's probably picked up the calibration file from that because they share folders. That's life. Yes, rail driver behaves a little better now. Not in this game anymore, clearly. I should be ringing my bell through here, shouldn't I? Otherwise, Eliza's going to tell me off. I will. <laughs> but you didn't, did you, until I did it? <laughs> Boy, I said you were you was talking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, the biggest thing I'm personally looking forward to is um, being able to make better scenarios than what you can do in Scenario Planner. Now, the changes to Scenario Planner I actually like. So being able to string more than one service together is something I really like the look of. Um, being able to create different paths. It's still a You're limited... approaching a red signal. Yeah, I know. I'm a long way from it, though. Um, You're still in notch four. Oh, I am. <laughs> no wonder it won't slow down. <laughs> Ah, uh, doing well today, aren't I? Now we'll be fine for the red, and it's gone back into notch one. Thanks, rail driver, being helpful as always. Yes, yeah, so I think being able to make better quality scenarios, both in Scenario Planner and using the editor, is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, the ones in Scenario Planner I know console people will be able to play, so I suspect I'll probably concentrate on that aspect. Wouldn't it be funny if it's one of those services that's broken? It kind of looks that way, but uh, we'll see. You have six minutes to get there, so... Yeah, maybe I'm just too quick for it. Let's go have a bit of a look down the map. Yeah, we're following another train. There it is. So it's not broken. We're just going to be um, cruising along following another train. And there it's gone yellow. So we'll just have to cruise a little more slowly. So we won't be going into notch 8 straight away. There's <laughs> no point. That's okay. Because I do kind of like making scenarios. And I think some of mine on um, the Creators Club thing have quite a lot of subscribers, so people seem to like them. Shiny Rain. 
Either that or it's just the YouTuber effect. Oh uh, yeah, that's possible. Who knows, really? It's one of the interesting things is you can ask people what they think and do they tell you the truth? Who knows? Is everyone else hearing that crackling? No. Yeah. I, I could hear uh, sounding like C&W just flushed a toilet. No, no. <laughs> It's only me playing my my game, you know. Sorry, people. This train's not for you. You should have got on the previous one. <laughs> They're Californians. They'll get over not being serviced or anything. Because California is full of. By by the time the trains left San Francisco, someone's probably stolen it anyway. About South San Francisco. I mean, it will melt in the rain, though. Yeah, that's true. Because it never rains here. <laughs> Funny thing about a desert. Yeah. Yeah, it is that. I did used to live here. That's actually something I appreciate a, a change between. Um, when the first video of Alva came out, which is the new LA route, um, there was water in the LA River. I'm very pleased to say in the latest stream, there was no water in the LA River because there shouldn't be. Is it be. full of garbage instead? Well, it should be. Broken cars and shopping trolleys and homeless people living under the bridges. What did I hear Californians call the homeless the other day? Some new term. But, you know, I reckon homeless cuts it. Some new PC term for it. What about people in the YouTube chat? Is there anything that you, you think you might hate about Train Sim World 4? Well, if it follows the trend of the previous games, it's not going to have manuals for any of the routes. <laughs> Yeah, I miss the manuals. I do have to admit they, aspects, they're kind of useful. Safety yes. systems. Yes. Telling you what's actually implemented inside the cab. Yes. I really wish that they would go back to making those. I think it would be good. It would be a handy thing. I have noticed the, the, there are some community people that um, have started a wiki. There's the Train Sim World 3 wiki, which has got some manual-like things in it. This is sad that yeah. we're going to have to go all the way to San Jose at about 30 miles an hour just so we don't run into this train in front of us. Didn't think this service through. <laughs> yes, let's schedule the express service with no ability to pass the local service right in front of it. Yep. Yep. Oh, well. But I've, I've looked a lot at the wiki, and it doesn't really, like seem to document in particular everything that they have implemented on the loco yeah not yet you could always start your own wiki but figuring out what is and isn't implemented and even if it says it's implemented does it do anything so sometimes you can change the position of a switch for example but it doesn't actually do anything because it's the bones are hooked up so that you can control it but there's nothing looking at the values in the yeah, simulation. Yeah, screens in particular. It's, you know, you have the rabbit hole of nested sub-menus and it's like, wait, which of these can I get into? Which ones of them do something? And when should I do it? Yeah, it'd be good then to have manuals. Find, then you find the ones that do do something, but you can't figure out how to make them work or if they work properly at all. Yeah, and it's an interesting thing is with the safety systems for example um, I know in the more recent ones that there are actually train drivers who are in the beta program now so they give really good feedback on the way they should work and the most recent ones have been quite accurate which is interesting because a lot of the community say that they're crap but you know they're crap because they're hard to use because they're realistic so what do you have do you have it uh, so that it's not realistic or do you have it 
so that it's easy to use. Hmm. I personally well, prefer the nice, realistic. The one nice thing about it being realistic is that you can go and find the actual driver's training manuals and trust that it'll follow that. Indeed. I've got uh, quite a lot of those in my collection that I've managed to build up. You can even buy real ones from time to time, the paper versions. Benjamin's Brain in a Jar in the YouTube chat says, The black text on an orange highlighter is a step back to the dark days of TSW2. Yeah, fortunately, there's not too much of that in the game. There's a little bit, but they've done that for accessibility to try and improve how many people can actually read the menus and read the writing. But mostly it's still white text on black for the most part. So it's still got high contrast. As we stop, we've got a green, so yeah. train will be bunched up now, straight to eight, as you do. We lost someone out of the uh, Discord. If anybody else wants to join the Discord, you're more than welcome. Be careful that you don't cause it to slip with the rain. Yeah, true, it's California train, it wouldn't know how to deal with it. sort of speed should keep us clear of the one in front of us. Menlo Park, next stop. So we're stopping kind of everywhere now after this. Probably. Well, you could always check the schedule. I could. <laughs> Benjamin's brain in a jar would like the option to customise the colour of the highlight. At least they fixed the grey being the selected option highlighter from TSW3. It was very hard to tell what was selected and what wasn't. You'd often look at it and go, have I selected that or not? Which was kind of annoying, particularly when you're doing things in livery designer or if you're building scenarios. That's where I found it most annoying. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see that's gone, Benjamin's Braid in a Jar. The new UI has a bit of thought to it. Um, the new HUDs I quite like. I think that's a good idea. Um, you don't need everything that's in this HUD down on the bottom right hand side here because I can quite happily get rid of that because I've got brake gauges there which tell me everything I need to know about my brakes. I'm not sure if this one's got a speedo, it does up there. So if I sit like that, I've got all the information I need to run this train. I don't need anything else. So you don't need to have the HUD on. Um, so the new mini HUDs that live up at the top, <coughs> very happy with those. And the fact that there's, I think, three, four? I think I've seen four different ones that you can have in, in different combinations, which could be interesting. PICC on the YouTube chat asks, is there ever going to be a co-op mode in which one of the two engineers will be assistant or even just a passenger? That's an interesting question. I've seen them talk about it occasionally. there but i haven't seen any any actual plans or anything coming up for it but it'd be an interesting way to play especially in the console world where it'd be kind of boring if you're sitting on the couch with your mate and your mate's playing trains in world and you can't do anything so it'd be cool if one of you could be the driver and the other one could be the guard or something like that that'd be good it'd be it'd be really nice for when they finally implement manual firemen yes Yes, being able to co-op for manual firing would be really cool. Manual firing worries me a bit because, you know, I do fire steam engines and it's it's hard. I, it takes a long time to learn how to do it. If they make it realistic, I think the percentage of players that would succeed would be really small without guidance, without someone training them. Because it's, it's kind of a dark art. There's some science to it, but it's... Well, it's kind uh, of a lost art, for most people anyways. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I work on a steam railway, so that helps. It's kind of useful. But You're I, I, one of the few people who know it anymore. I, I came out of diesel land and into steam land, 
and it, it's taken me a year to the point where they're willing to assess me. So I'm being assessed next Sunday for my certification. So that'll be good. But it, it has literally taken a year, and it's about that's about twenty end-to-end -end runs on our railway, which on a volunteer railway takes a fair time to get that many runs. I really feel like you would n need to have a tiered system for it. Like, differing levels of realism. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. Um, you could make it so that if you just throw coal in the hole and you keep your injector on, that could be the first level. Because I, I, I do like... in Transim Classic implements injectors really badly. And if you're steaming... Chances are your injector's on because you're using the water. Um, if you're not steaming, chances are your injector's off because you're not using the water. But in train sim, you just fill the thing and then you wait till it empties and then you fill it again. And that would never work because if you... Clearly, rail driver just had a conniption. If you... Um, Exposes the crown sheet. Yes, that's a bad thing. It would go bang. But if you op tried to operate that way, even if you weren't exposing the crown sheet... If you try and put in a lot of cold water at once, your steam pressure is just going to disappear completely. I'm supposed to stop here. Good no. luck! Handle off should not be more breaking than surface game. Stop it. <laughs> Hello, Pugface Music. You can join us in Discord today if you want to, Pugface Music. I should pop that link in the chat again, shouldn't I? It's been a while. I think Pugface has got Discord. How on earth did you make that stop? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> really good physics simulation. <laughs> Luck, I guess. Oh, yeah. Weird. But anyway, we made it. It's not quite in the right place. We even stopped a little bit early. I, I never managed to figure out train some classic oil firing. Yeah a bit strange i think there's the the b4d locomotives on for clear creek i always just leave the automatic firemen on because they just die when i use them like these people that wander up to the end of the platform like where else are you gonna go why aren't you getting on this train Pugface Music has been assembling IKEA furniture for the past two hours and needs a nap. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> it's not fun. They're waiting for the next train that's two dollars cheaper because it's not an express. Well, there you go. Probably true. And it's still raining in California. This is more rain than California's had in the last five years. <laughs> go a bit quicker now I think too because that other service is stopping everywhere in front of us and we're stopping everywhere now so we should be fine yeah, see multiple levels of steam firing would be good because we, we talked about just putting coal in the hole the next one you could be pattern firing which kind of works where you do your back corners and middle and then you do the the center of the box on the sides and the middle and then you do the front of the box if you keep running through that rotation it does kind of work um it's probably good enough for a game but i uh, mean trying to get more granular than that becomes a really difficult physics simulation it does and people with a keyboard i think you'd be okay because you could use something like the number pad to show where you wanted to throw the coal but um controller people that could get a little bit messy good luck hmm so it'd be interesting and there's there's lots of other things in the art of firing so there's such a thing as having too much water because if your water level's too high and it changes with your gradients you will prime the boiler yes and it might not not just be the the engine that primes so the engine might actually get away with it not happening is going to be another miracle stop. Um, actually, this thing resets its emergency brakes really easily, so we'll use them. You you might not prime the, the engine itself, but you might prime your accessories. So something like the whistle, you might give everybody on the platform a bath. 
seen that happen. I might have caused it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> that sounds simultaneously very entertaining because it's at a heritage railway and very annoying. Yeah. Yeah, normally we just dump soot all over them. Well, that's what they're paying for. Yes. They have soot dumped all over them, definitely. We've had someone else join the Discord. Oh, it's Cat. Cat hasn't said anything though. Oops, and I'm starting to roll away with the doors open. Parking brake. That should be an independent brake, but there you go. Off we go. Straight into Notch 8, as you do. None of this bell rubbish. It's a parking brake because you're in a cab car. Yeah, it's probably true. It probably doesn't have an independent handle, does it? Let's have a look. I don't think they do, typically. Yeah. So it's that little one down on the right-hand side. It's interesting that it's got um, more hardware where it would look like levers would belong, so maybe it's an automatically operated independent brake or something like that, so it's only on or off. Uh, it would have to apply the one on the locomotive, so... Yeah, it probably could do the um, the cab car one, but it, it doesn't make that much sense to do the cab car one because the main reason you're touching the independent brake at all is to bail it off so that your dynamics still work. Because these trains do have dynamics. They use them for most of the stopping power. I, I don't think that the independent actually stops the dynamics from running in this game. Depends on the train. Some of them it will. The Sherman Hill and the Cajon Pass Locos, it definitely does. On those ones, you have to keep bailing off, otherwise your dynamics will cut out. Which is not cool when you're halfway down Cajon Pass and your dynamics cut out and you go for a roller coaster ride after that because there's no recovering it. I I know that with the MP36 on this route, the dynamics will still run even if the independent's on. I don't know about the F40, though. Yeah, passenger trains actually run their dynamics a bit differently, so that could be why. They tend to allow it. Whereas the freight trains don't, because the uh, all they're going to do is lock up and slip. Might yeah, passenger stop here, trains. Good. Passenger trains are meant to stop a lot faster. <laughs> yes, and their carriages won't end up piled up all around them. Usually. Hopefully. Yeah. Then again, it's America, so they very well might. Yeah. Or you'll end up driving through a truck that's parked on the crossing for no readily apparent reason. Or a limousine. Yes. Yeah, I don't quite understand the concept of... And it happens here too, so it's not alone for America, but uh, why do people go onto a railway crossing when they can't get over the other side? So they clearly haven't thought about it. They go, oh, there's a red light on the other side. I'll just go over there and wait. And they forgot entirely about the back end. What I really don't understand are the people who drive around the crossing gates. Yeah, I actually saw a video of one of the people that subscribes to my channel, and I subscribe back to him, um, of someone doing just that on one of the most dangerous crossings we've got on, on Puff, where we're coming up the, the hill into Emerald. So you're steaming really hard to get up the hill. So there's a lot of momentum going on. And then some clown drove through the gates right in front of the train. And they missed, but it was looked pretty close from the angle of the, the video that the person made. So not good. I have seen too many cars get splatted by Brightline trains like that. That does seem to be quite common with Brightline. But think of it this way. They're cleaning out the gene pool. Uh, it's Florida. I don't think that you can clean it out without just wiping the entire thing out. <laughs> well, Florida will disappear one day. Yes, and then they'll spread the genes across the rest of the country. Yeah, it's one of those interesting things. Florida and Louisiana are going to be quite vulnerable to ocean rise, but no one seems to care. 
Yeah, the Floridians in particular seem to not be concerned about sea level rise, despite it impacting them most. Yep. Oh well. They can go and float around with Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> He's an interesting individual, that person. Well, hopefully Brightline manages to build another line somewhere else before that happens. <laughs> well, they might need to build a bridge. A really long one. Not like that hasn't been done in Florida before. Yeah, there's a couple of those, isn't there? That go right out into the Keys. Well, there used to be. I think the main one has collapsed because it would... got abandoned. Well, no, I think it was collapsed by a hurricane and then was then abandoned instead of being rebuilt the second time. I think Sandy took it out, if I remember right. It's the same one that filled up the uh, Hudson tunnels with water. Is going to stop early. Oh well, half the train's not on the platform. Doesn't matter. They can walk. Platforms are low. You stop train stops outside the platform here. They're they're very high platforms. So if you stepped out of a car not realizing it, you'd probably hurt yourself quite badly. Michael Lee yep. Leahy in the YouTube chat says. I know it will all up day on TSW4, but DCG, I think think you mean DTG, will stop again on a new one again on TSW5, and people are not happy again. So why again people not play game because they stop up day again TSW5? I think if I translate that a little bit, Michael, that um, what you're suggesting is that uh, you don't understand why people keep paying for the game when it's updating each year i think that's what you meant and we we talked about that a little bit before and if you're I'll get rid of that wiper if you're the kind of player that only plays your local country's content then it's um you're only getting the one route so it, and it's probably not the cheapest way to get that one route but you have to buy it to get future routes but if you're playing all the world content or at least two out of the three that you get you're probably okay with buying it each year but i i kind of think this is the pricing model that dtg will stick with so do i think tsw5 will come out next year at this time i have no idea but it wouldn't surprise me very much it really wouldn't So I think I'd kind of be expecting it. We're we going all the way to San Jose. I found the bridge that I was thinking about, and it was built in 1912 and was knocked down in 1935. Yeah. They probably knocked it down in the Great Depression just to have something to do. Well, no, no, no. It was taken out by a hurricane. <laughs> and then not fixed because of the Great Depression, maybe. Well, then FEC tr wanted to abandon it, and then the state of Florida bought it in 1938 to turn it into a highway, because America. Cars. That's not really any different here, though. Our trains only survive here because the governments don't want to pay to get rid of them. You also don't have, like, any train for passengers that goes across to the west other than the one tourist train that's like a four thousand dollar ticket yeah <laughs> but to be honest do you really want to take travel by train for five days probably not yes i do i've done it before <laughs> <laughs> oh look i have to say i have um i've gone from chicago to seattle and i've done seattle to los angeles so well yes. i've done i've done dc to seattle via chicago so that's quite a trip but I can't imagine the average commuter doing that when they can do the same thing in about five or six hours on a plane. Yeah, but the train is still more comfortable than the plane. Yes, much. And the other cool thing about the train is it goes from the centre of the city to the centre of the city. 
just putting a link in the YouTube chat again. Hello, Daniel Robert Jowett, train chaser Aiden, who's going to see if R761, which is a Hudson locomotive for the American people, is running today at Southern Cross. Actually, I shouldn't say it's an American locomotive. It's an American style, but it was built in England. Go figure. That's Victorian Railways for you. Wait, which locomotive? It's our R class, so it's it's based on the the Hudson. It's it's actually a strange cross between a Hudson and a Pacific, to be honest. But it's mostly Hudson, and they're actually built in in England in the 1950s, and a lot of them still survive today in preservation. We've even got standard Wait, gauge ones, broad gauge ones. We've got one that burns oil, two that burn oil actually, I think, and the rest coal. I do find it weird that um, the UK ended up building a bunch of locomotives for other countries that were larger than the locomotives they built for themselves. Yeah. Well, most of the UK railways are dead flat, in case you haven't noticed. There are some exceptions, like the Licky Bank, but generally speaking, if you get more than a 1% gradient in the UK, it's pretty unusual. So they didn't really need big locomotives. Meanwhile, the New York Central, they had a dead flat route. They still built big locomotives. America. <laughs> that was the mentality in the 30s and 40s. It's got to be bigger than everybody else in the world, or it's not worth doing it. Well, I mean, they pulled, what, like 20 coach trains at 100 miles an hour, so... Yeah, they probably still didn't exactly tax their locomotives, though. Uh, look at me proving that you do actually need PTC in America in this route. Come on, give me a little bit of service, just a little bit. There we go. Yes, it, it would be helpful to have the PTC implementation. Except Caltrain don't use it. But the reason why I was saying it would be helpful is because I was doing about 88 mile an hour then. And these trains limited to 79. Because they don't run PTC. They, yes, they are limited to 79 exactly because they don't have PTC. Yep. Yes, that's like putting in a law and then saying you don't have to comply with it if you don't go fast. If you don't go above 80 mile an hour. So they'll go, right, 79. Yep, ever since Naperville. Yep. So it's this one, The most of the lines around LA are the same too, I believe. They're most of the lines around the country are the same. And the commuter ones, yeah. Well, I mean, any of the any of the ones that, like, are decently built, but um, aren't, like, owned by Amtrak, pretty much. Yeah, they do own a little bit of their own trackage, but not a lot if you consider the whole country. Well, they own the NEC, and that's the main area that trains can go fast here, so. And the new ones can't actually run at their top speed, isn't that sad? Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least they'll go 160 instead of 150 like the Acela. You yeah. know, 160 like the Metroliners were supposed to do. One of the things I find about high-speed train service that I always find vaguely funny is, yes, they achieve a high-speed run, and the same happens with, with ours, while it's out in the country. But because they don't have dedicated track as they approach the city, they end up going slow. Um, the, the Melbourne to Sydney is a good example of that. It, it travels at about 170 kilometres an hour most of the time, which is pretty slow compared to a lot of the rest of the world's high-speed trains, but ours are from the 80s and have never been upgraded or replaced. But once they actually get near Melbourne, then they're slowing down to about 80 kilometres an hour. And in up towards Sydney, they're really doomed because they have to go through the mountains, so they end up crawling through there at about 20 kilometres an hour. And you could make high-speed rail more high-speed simply by fixing the ends. Not worry about the bit in the middle. Getting another 30 or 40 kilometres an hour in the middle is really not going to help you very much if your ends are still slow. Yeah, but tunnels are expensive, or at least that's what everyone who is tasked with budgeting out ungodly quantities of money um, to do everything else say. You know, we've just had a big uh, COVID recovery program called the Big Build. 
which was designed to keep construction people employed during COVID and it's kept going afterwards because of course they're construction projects and they last longer than everything. One of those is a new set of tunnels for our underground railway that cuts north-south through the city. We've never had north-south lines before. So it'll be quite good. It relieves the existing underground system a bit from all of the traffic it had. And so they'll get more services through there as well by diverting some lines through the new ones. And they're finally replacing the um, what was the city circle ring that went away in the 50s, I think. They're actually replacing that with a tunnel version now. So that work started. It's kind of cool. At least you actually started building something. Yeah, when I... Outside California, there's plenty of stuff getting built, but California seems to struggle with it. I remember when we, we first moved to California on one of the freeways, I think it was 80, there was this bridge that was getting built. And when we left and came back to Australia four years later, it was still being built and it hadn't moved much. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And when they built the new Bay Bridge, they brought German company in to do it because they wanted it built in. <coughs> Well, I probably want it actually finished, I guess. And I, I did a deployment of um, fare systems into trains, trams and BART over there. And I, I brought in team leaders from Australia and I used locals to do the work. And we just kept going through crews and people that we found that were willing to work and, and do a good job stayed on and the ones who didn't want to do anything didn't last very long. But all of my leads were Aussies. As the um, local leads, we had a couple of good ones, but out of the 10 crews, eight were Aussies. Just because I could trust them to go out for the night and actually do their job and not disappear on me. It is astonishing to me that a hundred years ago we had the like most built up rail network in the world and now where are we? Yeah, it's not too different from Victoria. I won't go get it because this camera will never let me show it, but um, in the 1880s our rail network was huge. Almost every town of any size was served by rail. Not anymore. Well, here, for the most part, the towns existed because they were served by rail, so... And then promptly disappeared when they weren't. Coming into the joyous place that is San Jose. Oh, just wait until you get stuck crawling in at 20 miles an hour for the past... for the last, like, half mile or so. Yeah, I don't know why they do. I like this little station here that's just for employees. But it's still got fair gates. Isn't that weird? You will pay to go to work. Mm. Yeah, I remember putting those in. <laughs> it's like, really? You charge your staff? And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the station's all the way up there. Then they have to walk down into Seamoth. They couldn't have put the station down here. No, that was too hard. It's just bizarre. Yeah. The joyous place, San Jose. It's just basically kind of hot, kind of dry, kind of all year. That's just how it is. We had friends who lived here for a long time. He worked for the Goog, and he uh, realised about a year ago that um, his, because he started working for Google when they were little and he was responsible for the petabyte network that spans the globe. It was one of his ideas and designs that they brought him over to do that. And he discovered a couple of years ago that he was actually rich because he would not really bothered looking, but the stocks that he got because they weren't paying much when he joined in lieu of payment made him a rich bloke. So he stopped working and they, they've moved to... Um, North Carolina now, onto a very large piece of land. 
So they I mean, not the state that I would have chosen, but hell of a lot better than California. Yeah, I don't know why they chose North Carolina either, but uh, I actually know quite a ridiculous number of people from North Carolina, to be honest. But that's because I um, hang out in redneck circles because of steam and, and farm engine shows and things. So I know lots of people from Ohio and Kansas, Indiana. I was born into redneck circles, so. <laughs> Congratulations well, on your so escape. Much, not so much redneck as hillbilly, but it, same difference. I lived in hillbilly for a long time. Now we live down by the sea. So we used to live in the mountains east of Melbourne. Yeah, I, I grew up in Appalachia, so. Well, barely Appalachia, but. Nice place, though. Very limited employment, but. Beautiful place to live. Beautiful place to live. No one around. <laughs> Very boring. Welcome to someone else who's just joined in. Who can't hear us and can't speak because they're muted both ways. But that's okay. Thank you for trying. Coming into San Jose anyway, so we're not too far off the, the end of this. I'll just have a quick look at the time there. Because I know my other half wants to go shopping, and she's been slowly, creatively making more noise in the background to uh, <laughs> emphasize that. <laughs> and thank you to the NVIDIA room and echo filter removal that gets rid of most of it. Makes it to say Discord's filtering is quite good too, because uh, all the voices are coming through quite clearly and cleanly. It didn't used to be that way, it used to be quite horrible. And what's the only good thing about San Jose? Leaving. <laughs> well, then it's the opposite of what you're doing right now. Yeah. Well, I was in San Jose for a, a conference just before COVID about four months before COVID and I found out where it was and I went, great <laughs> guess we spent most of the nights in San Francisco because it was more fun mind you, nights in San Francisco are always a little bit of a challenge because you know, you don't want to step in someone's poo and it's harder to see in the dark and there's a lot of it I think your stop point is Back there, I know. Now. Yeah, I know. I just want to make all the passengers walk there. <laughs> and I'm tempting fate with this red signal as well. Thinking that the you're train also, will actually stop. You're also tempting um, accidentally walking past the stop marker. Yeah, when it pulls me out of the game. There we go. Now they can all walk. And they'll enjoy it. So this guy stopped down here, but he's probably a Gilroy train. Double header. I think it's just a very long train. Hmm. Could be. There are a couple of these in the timetable. Yes, but you can see where my stop point was. It's all the way back there. But now all these people can go for a walk. It's good for them. Then there's this uh, lonely person here, anyway. She's waiting for a train to nowhere. Otherwise known as Gilroy. She's got a friend now, though. Well, had one. Very briefly. Oh, uh, well, it's all good. That's something they ha haven't uh, talked about. When you're looking at the preview streams, have a look at the characters' faces. Have a close look. I think you'll like. But anyway, that about covers us for today, I think. We might do some more open mic stuff in the future, I think. I think see if people kind of like the idea. Um, probably try and stick to my usual Sundays, though, which is Saturdays for most people, because more people will be able to join in then, I guess, from around other parts of the world. We should uh, lock the doors. Anyway, thank you very much for joining in. Um, the views around TSW probably fairly similar across the board and we do see the, the some people that don't like this what's probably going to become an annual pricing 
kind of idea and some people who don't mind it and we'll see where it goes from here we'll see how people's voices go because what will govern it is whether people get their credit card out or not so if people get the card out and buy it what they're saying is yep okay i'll put up with this or you know they might put up with it they might be happy with it whatever um or if they don't buy it if sales drop then that'll tell them something too tell them maybe annual is not such a good idea but let's see what happens and i think you will actually probably enjoy four i think i can safely say that um, and i particularly like scotsman i've given tons of feedback for scotsman and they've done most of what i've talked about so i'm very happy and i understand why the bits that they haven't done haven't happened so it's cool anyway enjoy yourselves um and looking forward to the launch. I will definitely stream it a lot. I'll be making a lot of tutorials. I'll probably replace most of my Transim World 3 tutorials with Transim World 4 content, even though lots of those things haven't changed, like how to choose trains and how to use Rail Driver, simply because people will look for the TSW 4 version, and if they see 3, they'll go, oh, no, this isn't what I want. I want it for 4, even though it's the same. But that's okay. It's all good. Anyway, enjoy yourselves. Thanks very much for joining in. And uh... actually, you know what I should do? And this will be just for the Discord people. Uh, let's see. What have I got from Train Sim World 3 I could give away? What about... Uh, no, no one's going to want that route. What have I got that I haven't given away, though? Hmm. Hmm. There you go this one i've got a key for this one i buy this stuff from the humble bundles and then i keep it to give away to people so i'll drop this into the discord channel so if one of you guys wants peninsula corridor go for it um if if no one wants it here i will drop it into a youtube post later on so do say so if you take it in the discord channel and thank you very much for joining in I do believe I've had that route since it came out, so... <laughs> yep, I've had it for a long time. <laughs> yep. And I know that uh, Eliza's got it, even though he can't talk at the moment. All right, I will pop it in the YouTube chat then. Are there any routes you guys don't have? Mm, the m <laughs> more recent German ones, pretty much. Yeah, I'm the same. Well, pretty much all the ones that haven't gone on a decent sale any time recently. There you go. You can have a fight over this. Oh, no, that's RRO. That's old. I thought that was recent, but no, it's not. I just looked at the name. Uh, got Hedberg Lubeck. No, I've given that away. Damn it. <laughs> I better mark this one as given away too, because even if someone doesn't pick it up right now, someone will pick it up when the VOD comes out. Uh, that's it for German stuff. Not much of the German stuff comes out in the Humble Bundle. I guess it's mostly just UK things that turn up in that one. Oh, well, that's life. Well, if you had one from Midland, I could take that one. Uh, do I have Midland? Got Tees Valley. Uh, I've got Northern Trans Pennine. I've got BML, Brighton Mainline. Got yep, Cathcart Circle. Uh, yep, got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got the Marseille de Avignon, but I'd be surprised if anyone didn't have that, since it was free for a while. If it hasn't come out in the past six months, I probably have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think, is there anything else on here? No, because I've given away all the others. Oh, well, that's life. Have you got the Long Island Railroad? Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> what about Train Sim Classic? Uh, what have I got in here? Yeah, I think, I think I bought the last Humble Bundle there. That won't help then. Clinchfield? Frankfurt? Yeah, I bought the last Humble Bundle and uh, gave away most of those keys to another friend mm. because there was only one in there I didn't have. Yeah, it's how it works, isn't it? Oh, well. It's all good. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for joining in and enjoy yourselves. And I think we'll do this again because I get you know it's kind of interesting. It's a, a different kind of thing.
and see if we can coax a few more people to join in as well. So enjoy yourselves and see people next time. Bye now. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.